Once I posted my uh, engine model 3 video to YouTube, I got a lot of feedback on that video. And a lot of people had a lot of very cool and interesting ideas on how I could improve my engine. Alright, what's up guys? G Martin back for another video. If you haven't been following me recently, you'll notice that I have been basically designing and prototyping air-powered 3D printed engines. This is a continuation on that project, is I'm going to go over all the new ideas that I have. And yeah, basically I just want to hear your feedback and I want to know what you guys think. So the first idea we can discuss is the idea of using the air that comes out of, if it'll focus, there's a hole right there and a hole right there if you can see it. And those are basically the exhaust ports on this engine. Some people had an idea to use the air that comes out of that exhaust and because it's still at a semi high pressure try and use it to power a turbine which would be directly connected to the crankshaft and I think it's a good idea uh, I would have to look into that I might have to do some research on basically car turbos because that's all it is and I might end up doing that in the future it's not a bad idea I just need to learn more about it before I actually try it the second idea that people kept bringing up is to create a double acting cylinder. The difference between a double acting cylinder and the engine which I've created is a double acting cylinder actually opens a port to let the exhaust air out of the engine. In my model, like I said, I only have two exhaust holes, but I could definitely change up the slider plate and allow it to basically open and close an exhaust port for each piston cylinder. That is actually a very smart idea. That might be at the top of my list. It wouldn't be that hard to do in terms of what parts I would have to change on this. I'm definitely going to look into it. The third idea that people kept bringing up was to basically seal the engine better. And while it sounds easy, it's it really isn't. It would be kind of tough. I would have to basically design the parts in a way where it would be 100% sealed. And I know I could go out and buy like rubber seals, like O-rings to put in this, but the whole purpose of this project is to keep it as completely 3D printed as I can. I will probably redesign some parts and basically my, okay. <clears throat> my whole idea with this is if I can get rid of the nuts on here and just include the bolts, it would basically make it more airtight. And I'm gonna roll with that idea. Uh, that'll probably be coming in a future engine. Um, yeah, I, I think it's a great idea and it's definitely worth looking into. The fourth thing that people kept talking about is I need to find a way to measure the engine RPM while it's basically while I'm testing it. Okay. I actually did some research. I found out I could buy a cheap RPM, basically an RPM like meter where it uses a laser. Uh, they have them on Amazon and they're not that expensive. So I will probably purchase one in the next few days. That'll help not only the videos because you guys will get to know how fast the engine's running, but it'll help me too because I'll be able to tell what works better and yeah, what works worse. See where I'm going with this? I can basically fine tune the engine a lot better than the situation I'm in now. I'm kind of just flying blind with this. I'm going purely off of observation and I feel like basically finding out the engine RPM while it's running would be a great starting point to getting more, basically getting more detailed with the project and getting more specs that I could ultimately use to create a better engine in the future. I will probably be doing that in the next few videos, so stay tuned. So when I put my 3D printed engine on Reddit, someone had the idea of bringing up tractor engines and the difference between tractor engines and say a regular car engine is tractor engines are oriented for more torque. And they do that with basically having bigger piston heads and bigger displacement. And if I can make an engine that is, you know, like almost 100% airtight, I feel like this could be possible. I definitely think it's a good idea to look into this engine. So 
I'm gonna definitely keep that in the back of my mind and possibly do it in the future. This was the last thing that people kept asking me. Uh, they kept going into detail about why I decided to use a 3D printer to create the engine in the real world. And they kept mentioning I should have done CNC milling. I should have had it, you know, just carved out of a block of metal. I just don't have the money to do it at this time. And then I also simply don't have the time to, you know, invest all this effort into making it metal when the engine is still in its very early stages. Um, it's not to a point where I'm happy with it. Like, yes, I'm happy with the progress I've made, but I'm not happy with how well it operates. Um, I'm still gonna fine tune it and I'm still gonna make it better. But that being said, once I have a design which I'm 100% happy with, I will probably get it either 3D metal printed or I'll have it carved out of a CNC machine. And I think that'll probably be like the very end of this project once I get somewhere where I'm happy with it and I just don't want to mess with it anymore. But for now, I'm going to keep prototyping and I'm going to keep using that 3D printer to basically print engines. And yeah. All right, guys, that's going to be the end of this video. It was just a quick recap that I wanted to talk about some of the new ideas that people had and pretty much what I think of them. But stay tuned for future videos on this project. I have quite a few things coming up, as I just said, and I hope you're as excited as I am. And yeah, with that being said, I'm G. Martin. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.